Hi guys and welcome to another Asus Transformer Prime video post Jelly Bean update. Uh, done a couple of videos now just um, using Jelly Bean for the first time and see what my experience has been like and y you may have realised from the previous video that I was kind of a little bit despondent about things, mostly getting irritated about the um, Wi-Fi and internet situation that doesn't seem to have resolved itself but I'm going to try and move away from that in this video and look at some other things. As you can see I've managed to play around a little bit with the uh, Transformer Prime now, so I've put on a new wallpaper. I, I have to say, actually, using the Transformer Prime just generally is starting to be a bit of a better experience. It's, it certainly does run faster without um, as many errors. So far, I've not had it crash on me uh, to a boot, reboot, which is uh, a nice thing. And yeah, it's generally working okay uh, as long as I don't touch the internet. Uh, so, just to show you a couple of things, uh, one thing I did is I transferred, I plugged the Transformer Prime directly into my laptop, which is just out of view there, and transferred a video file on, which is something that I wasn't able to previously do on the Transformer Prime. It never really agreed with pl being plugged into a laptop for transfers, and I managed to put on a movie very quickly, and it worked perfectly. Um, so that was nice, it means that it's more... Uh, connectable, which wa which it wasn't before. Uh, and now I'm going to look at some other questions of compatibility. One of the questions that was asked was whether you could uh, still use Bluetooth connectivity. So I'm going to connect it to my mobile phone, which I haven't done since I've reset it. So this will be a live test uh, to see if it works. If I can remember how to do it, Just scan on both machines, see if it works. There we are. So we should be pairing them together now. There we are. And let's try and send a file from my phone. This picture of a dog will do nicely. So I'm going to try and send the phone, and as you can see, that was pretty reliable and quick. And if we can open the picture now, we should see a picture of the dog on both. Yep, so proof there that the Bluetooth uh, is still working fine. Next thing we're going to look at is connecting HDMI to a television. Okay, uh, another live test here then. So we have the Asus Transformer Prime here. I've detached it from the dock. I'm going to plug it straight into my uh, television using my HDMI cable. Uh, this was another thing that used to work fine so I'm expecting this to be uh, work just as well as it once did. Sorry while I find a connector. Right here we go. There we are connected. And I just hope it's plugged into the right channel. There we are and that's worked fine. Uh, the resolution seems okay, it's just a couple of borders, there's a border here, but I don't think that's too bad, and it's pretty instant on there. So again, another thumbs up uh, for the HDMI, which I always said, I seem to remember I said in my main review that the HDMI was one of the strong points of the Asus Transformer Prime, and that's still the case, and the sound still works fine, it just blanks out on the screen, you can still use the controls on the screen. But the video is actually played back on the television. I'm trying to control it from behind the camera, which is very difficult to do. There we are, that's scrolled fine onto a different part of the track. So that bit's still working, which is all well and good. Okay, what I'm going to do here is just some general tests as if I was using my Asus Transformer Prime as part of my daily life, daily routine. So one example might be just simply plugging it back into the dock. All these little things that, where you're just using the Asus Transformer Prime as you normally would, and then all of a sudden you would catch it out with something ordinary and it would just stop working and you would wonder why. So another example is I'm just changing it to a, 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 la a random live wallpaper and seeing how that looks. And that seems to, it's a very nice wa uh, live wallpaper actually, I quite like that. And then we'll just go into a random browser go to a website, let's see, let's go to Engadget, 
and just see how quickly it loads up that page. Again, just going about the daily routine. I'm using Dolphin browser here at the moment, and um, it's loaded up the beginning of a page quite well, but then it seems to get stuck. Uh, so just using the internet again, it's just a, a bit of a problem, but actually it's not loading too bad there, so uh, I'll take that as a, a successful test of that. But then I'll quickly come out of Dolphin, plug in a, an SD card, see if it detects it. And then we'll investigate what's on the card. A lot of these things I'm doing for the first time as well, so uh, we're taking into account that maybe it's going to slow down a bit, but so far uh, nothing too bad there. I'm just going to have a look at a picture from my SD card directly. And yeah, that seems to load up fine. Performance, I would say, is pretty consistent there. We'll plug in a mouse now which I don't think I've done since I've turned it on since I've done the factory reset, sorry, so we'll stick the mouse in light comes on, which is pretty promising and I can see, I'm not sure if you can see the mouse uh, moving about, but I can I'll just do an example of dragging this around here and it jumps around which is all fine let's go into Firefox I'll just show you by the way that I still haven't been able to fix uh, flash working with sound uh, I, mean, I have installed Flash, it's Flash 11.1 but unfortunately the sound isn't working yet and I've asked a couple of people, uh, sorry, uh, uh, some people have said they've got the same problem some people have said Flash is working fine so it's another disparity between uh, some people having success with uh, just one second Right, there we are. Some people having success uh, installing Flash and having the sound to work, but some people not having success. Uh, so just to try it one more time. The mouse wheel's not working on this um, browser, it looks like, unfortunately. So here's a video which should now be playing Flash, and it's not playing Flash. But, as I say, I'm trying not to concentrate too much on the internet today, just to demonstrate here that plugging in a random mouse has worked fine. We'll do another test now, plugging in a portable hard drive. This is one of the strengths of the Asus Transformer Prime. Of course, that you can have a hard drive plugged into the computer and it's powered by the uh, Transformer Prime, as opposed to the Nexus 7, which can't do this. Uh, so it's one of the versatile strengths of the Asus Transformer Prime. If it works, of course. If it doesn't, then we've got an issue, but it is picking up the um, storage device there. So we'll go into it and let's see if we can play a random video from here. If I have any videos on here, I do. Uh, let's play Ashes Fever, which is a cricket show. So as you can see, that took about 20 seconds to plug in the hard drive and was working fine, which is another very um, excellent performance there by the Transformer Prime. Unmount it and get out there, and final test, unfortunately I haven't got any games installed on the Transformer Prime at the moment however, we'll still be able to test whether the Transformer Prime will accept the video games controller by plugging it in and now you'll see that it's flashing and I can scroll on this main screen here by using the D-pad or I could before, so yeah proof there and you can see that as I move the analog stick it's selecting different things so another good test there, that a games controllers still work with the Asus Transformer Prime, so you can use emulators and so on. So, there, the Asus Transformer Prime in the four minutes that I've been testing it, just going about random things, it passed with flying colours, no problems. So, we'll move on to where it could possibly hiccup. So, now we're going to go back to the internet using an application which relies heavily on the internet, and this is Google Earth that I've installed, but I've not run the application yet, so I have no idea it's how it's going to run. Just to prove to you that the connection is at full bars, so we should be expecting this to work very well. If you've seen my previous review on Google Earth, on the Transformer Prime, you'll see that it crashed quite a lot and got stuck, especially when I started using 3D buildings. So we're going to go into the application and see how well this runs. And straight away, that was quicker than how it first worked, so that's a good start. I need to get rid of these uh, guides because I'm not interested in them. Let's go to um, let's go to San Francisco. 
because I'm hoping if I can spell San Francisco, I don't know if I have that. Okay, it's found San Francisco. Uh, what I'm going to do is try and turn on the 3D buildings. And get rid of that thing. So I'm trying to do a bit of multitasking within the application and it's going a bit slow. It took a while to drag away those pictures, but it has worked nonetheless. Zoom in is okay. Now, I must admit, I am not from the US. I don't know where the center of San Francisco is. I'm going to assume it's here. It's coping just about okay. And um, now, let's see if we can turn on 3D. 3D buildings is already turned on. So we have a 3D building here, actually. Stops. You can just see it's just slowing down. Is Now, the question is, is this the application or is this the internet? So there we are. I have a 3D image of San Francisco. Kind of like melted buildings. Very similar to... Um, the maps application in Apple also I've been told. As you can see, just when I'm trying to do different things, can you notice a lag here? Evidence still that... Uh, let's jump too far away there. And as you can see, it's, it's just lagging so much that uh, I'm finding it a bit difficult to control. Once I get to the 3D buildings, the uh, application is really struggling. So, now I ask you the question, is this the Wi-Fi that's causing this issue, or is it the application? If it's the application, then it's further evidence that the Transformer Prime, as expensive and as powerful as it's supposed to be, cannot deal with this application. As you can see, complete lag. So I was going happily along using the Asus Transformer Prime and then I hit what I've always talked about when I've been reviewing the Transformer Prime is you'll be going happily along, walking along and then you just hit a wall which comes from nowhere and then it frustrates you. And this is an example of, of this. What I will have to do to give the Transformer Prime a chance to defend itself is do some direct comparisons to the Nexus 7 and see how that performs when using Google Earth. Because it could be that Google Earth just isn't a very well optimized application. But as soon as I move into the center of San Francisco here, you can see how, well, it, now it's starting to work. It's taken about a minute and a half to two minutes to get this picture looking the way it does. So anyway, I'm gonna end it there before I carry on waffling. So, so some positives there for the Asus Transformer Prime. Using general applications, uh, and just navigating around seems to be a better experience. There was no sense of a crash, and it was ex accepting things absolutely fine. But then I hit Google Earth, and then I hit the problems, and I expected it to do that, which is kind of one of the other problems I have with the Transformer Prime, my lack of faith in it. I expect it to not work properly with Google Earth, and that's exactly what it did, which kind of puts me off using uh, the Transformer Prime. Anyway, Keep these questions coming in, keep your opinions coming in, because I want this to kind of be a shared community experience of uh, the new Jelly Bean operating system. And uh, this uh, background is absolutely beautiful. You might be wondering what um, background it is. I'm just zoom in there for you. I'm going a bit off topic here, but uh, KF Flames Live Free Wallpaper. Quite a nice wallpaper. Anyway, that's me done for this review. I'll certainly do more on the Acer Transformer Prime and I'll try and use it a bit more, give you some more experiences. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you again soon in another video.